Working out tones your muscles. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. The best way to burn fat is on an empty stomach. Uh, yeah, go ahead and crinkle that up and throw that one away as well. Running will destroy your knees. Even though I hate running personally, it will not destroy your knees. My name is Dr. Stacy Morris. I am the owner of The Physio Fix, which is in Phoenix, Arizona. I have been practicing physical therapy for six years now, and my specialty is working in sports, but specifically working with strength athletes and gymnasts. Hi, my name is Dr. Wesley Wong. I am a physical therapist, and I have been practicing for about five and a half years now. I personally specialize in ACLs and working with high school and college level athletes, and I work at Healthy Baller. Today, we're debunking fitness myths. Your knees should never pass your toes when squatting. And this is something that I maybe pushed a little bit early in my career when I didn't understand everything. You should allow your body to move naturally, and if you limit that, you actually add more stress, as we've known through literature, to your hips and your low back. So. To limit that movement is just absurd to me, and I feel like that myth needs to die now. You think about daily things that we do. Let's take away strength training beyond that. You go down the stairs, your knees go past your toes. When you play your sport, do you ever think about your knees being past your toes? And the answer is 100% no. And Stacey, for you, you were a gymnast. Like when you did your jumps and flips and landings, I can guarantee you were never like, oh no, I, my knees cannot go past my toes. You're absolutely correct. So now we see so many ankle limitations because of this movement pattern that people have been you know, spreading a myth or trying to teach for the wrong reasons without letting them just move like athletes, like let your body move natural and usually it does what it needs to do to be most efficient at whatever movement that is. Soreness is a sign of a good workout. Soreness is basically when you have an accumulation of lactate in your blood. It turns your yourself into more of an acidic state and that's when you kind of feel that burn effect that people talk about. Is soreness a, a factor of a workout? Yes, potentially. Our, our patients or athletes have had plenty of great workouts and have not felt sore the next day, right? It's just the way the body is and sometimes you just have a harder workout, the shorter workouts, those 15, 20 minute workouts. Those are the ones that typically I don't personally feel too sore in, but if I get like a nice hour and 15 workout when I'm just going hard at it, then I'm gonna feel a little bit more sore the next day. But again, that doesn't mean that my 20 minute workout was ineffective or bad. Like a lot of people, they're like, oh, I can barely walk, I'm so sore. And their trainer is like, good, and I'm like, that's not so good. Like you should be able to walk. You should have been progressed in a way that was so gradual that you are feeling stronger and maybe you are still getting a little bit sore, but you don't feel like you can't walk the next day. I think rest and recovery, nutrition, sleep is super important. Bigger muscles are stronger. From a physiology standpoint, bigger muscles may have the ability to be stronger. They could have bigger or more motor units to be able to get stronger, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are stronger. There are people that have genetic differences. They have longer muscles and they're not gonna be like as like short or as prominent. So they maybe don't look as big, but they may be really, really strong because there's more of them and there's a shorter tendon where they're attaching. Or, you know, there's people that have different limb lengths. Your levers are gonna play into how strong you are. I do talk about size because obviously dealing with the rehab side of things, they have a post-op knee that looks like half the size of the other side, but I'm never like, oh, you're weak because you look like this. It's just, hey, let's get in the weight room, let's get a little bit stronger, let's make sure you can perform your sport safely, confidently, and all that kind of stuff. And for me, that's all I really care about is the more the performance side of things. Um, and getting stronger is, is gonna help you in your performance level for the most part. You need to eat meat to build muscle. <laughs> your eyes got big there. Definitely not. You do need to eat protein to build muscle, but you do not need to get your protein from meat sources only. They have vegan protein shakes. You can do lentils, even quinoa has protein in it. Cardio before weights, what are your thoughts? So, it depends on your goals. Are your goals cardiovascular related or are your goals strength related? I think that that thing needs to be first. So if you're a strength athlete, you definitely need to make sure that you're focusing on what's important, which is your strength training. And this is not a black and white thing, just like a lot of things in the fitness world and rehab world that we work with. Cardio doesn't have to be what you think it is. It doesn't have to be biking or running or swimming. Like I do weightlifting as a form of cardio because I get my heart rate up and then I'm able to, to sustain that. And that alone is cardiovascular work. Working out tones your muscles. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face because what is toning? I like, like think of toning as something a printer does. I think when people think of tone, they think of seeing their muscles and it being like visible. And it always comes down to calories in versus calories out. 
and like being able to see your muscles means that you probably are in a caloric maintenance or deficit state. So you got to make sure you're really focusing on what you're eating too, not just focusing on what you're doing in the gym. There are plenty of runners out there who dread, who dread lifting, um, but they're still mm -hmm. considered on the toner side, you know, and that's where the word tone is very, very subjective. But there are other people who are on the more strength conditioning side who love to lift and are also toned. So again, mm -hmm. that's where the individuality really needs to come into play here. Absolutely. It's all going back to their goals. What are your goals? And for me, my goals are not as much aesthetic anymore as they are just, you know, feeling strong, being strong and like being the best version of myself. Exercise cancels out unhealthy eating habits. Definitely not, 100% <laughs> not. <laughs> my sister used to say this all the time. She'd be like, you know, I, I'm gonna work out today so I can go to McDonald's. And I was like, what? If you're eating lots of saturated fats and processed food, it's not good for you. And she was like, but you know, I'm, I'm burning more than I'm consuming. Isn't that what matters at the end of the day? And I was like, yes, that's important. But it's really comes down to like the things that you're putting inside your body that's gonna have a long-term effect. It's not just calories in versus calories out. Let's hit your macros in these different three areas, like the big protein, carbs, and fats, whatever that is for you. Can you have your occasional cheap burger and things like that? Of course you can. If I were to go eat fast food, whatever one it is, for 14 of my lunch and dinners, then and I could lift two hours a day, that would not necessarily help me. You should bulk and cut to build muscle. I have done a stint of bodybuilding and I know that this is something that I used to also believe before I became more knowledgeable on the subject. Usually bodybuilders, they will bulk up just to put on some muscle and then they will cut down so then they can see that muscle and see what that muscle looks like. Now, if your goal is not to be a bodybuilder and you wanna bulk and cut simultaneously, you can do that, but you have to be in a positive nitrogen state in your body and the way that you can achieve that is by increasing your protein which in the form of amino acids and also adding in creatine and then making sure you're sleeping enough it's not easy like putting on you know mass and then taking off mass because then like you're like man i look so good when i'm cutting but then i feel terrible when i look in the mirror when i'm bulking and it just throws you into this like emotional state of like not feeling good about yourself. I see that in some of my patients too. And they don't know how to kind of return back to normal eating because they've been in either one or the other for so long. I think that for people who are really trying to, you know, be structured and, and rigid with this, there is so much help out there. There, I know Stacy takes on online clients and things like that. To do it in a safe, productive, structured way, you need to work out for at least an hour for it to have an effect. Please go ahead and rip that one up as well. I'm a big believer in working smarter, not harder, and shorter doesn't mean not effective. The ACSM, they have those like minimum effective dosage numbers for like adults, right? Over the course of the week, you have to accumulate that many minutes of moderate intensity for it to be considered effective for your cardiovascular health. And then if it's vigorous activity, I think it's 75 minutes to 150 minutes. So it's even smaller. Can you only survive on 20, 30 minute workouts? Yeah, you can, but I think that obviously you can get significantly more done in a little bit more time, which is I think the hour time frame. Running will destroy your knees. You can rip that one up too. Even though I hate running personally, it will not destroy your knees. I don't know who made that up or when that became a thing, but it's definitely not backed by any scientific research. And I know I've read some recent studies actually show that runners have thicker density of their cartilage and their ligaments. So actually running helps their knees. It does not hurt your knees. Yeah, we talk about how strength training helps to build resiliency in your tissues and running it actually does the same. I, I, I was laughing when I read this just because I grew up playing basketball. Running is involved in basketball. I work with a lot of soccer and lacrosse players. They have to run. And I can promise you that all their knees are not destroyed. I think that the people who do have pain with running, that probably means that their body and their tissues just aren't used to whatever the capacity they're doing. It's more of, did you start you know, progressing your mileage too fast, bumping up your intensity of other things too fast and your body wasn't ready for it? Did you change your shoes recently and now your foot has to move in a different way? Like. All of those little things kind of add up. The best way to burn fat is on an empty stomach. Uh, yeah, go ahead and crinkle that up and throw that one away as well. <laughs> Here, I've got big safe.
So this is one of those ones I used to believe too, that they've come out with a bunch of new studies to show that no, you do not have to do fasted cardio to burn fat. Obviously, like if you're in a caloric deficit, you're in a caloric deficit, but then you're gonna be burning fat. It's more like, what kind of workouts are you doing? What heart rate zone are you in? And then what does your nutrition look like? The intensity probably matters as well. We train a lot of these high school and college level athletes and they're coming in, they're sprinting, they're cutting, they're lifting. We typically recommend them eating something before they come in, like even if it's like a granola bar or something like that. Eating breakfast is fine. Not eating breakfast, if you don't wanna eat breakfast, that's also fine, but just make sure you're eating what you need to be eating and getting the nutrients you need to get throughout your day. Lifting heavy weights at a young age will stunt your growth. I, I think that, Stacey, you, know, you and I would both agree. <laughs> You and I will both agree that this is something that maybe we grew up on. There's no evidence to support that viewpoint that lifting weights is going to stunt your growth. I've looked into it because I started lifting at a younger age. I'm actually, you know, pretty tall for a gymnast. I think strength training does play a, a, a big role in youth sports and keeping them healthy and keeping them strong. And I also think people automatically assume that strength training means that you're lifting extreme heavy weights when that's not the case. Like picking up a three to five pound weight is considered weight training and strength training. Assisted exercises are not as effective. My immediate thought is not as effective as what? Does assisted mean that you're just getting some help? Or does it mean that you're using bands? Maybe a lot of people have a hard time doing pull-ups and they use a band, but does that mean that they're not getting stronger That because they're using a band? No, it just means that at their current level, they need a band to be able to perform the movement. Sometimes we do assisted mobility work, so you, we use like a, a band to assist in doing this specific position. It's actually gonna help us in the long run by using some assistance right now. It all comes down to what's the goal of the exercise? Like, are we trying to you know, get more mobility or get stronger? Because yeah, sometimes using assistance is what we need to use. You can't exercise with flat feet. This is just plain silly. This is so silly, oh my gosh. There's like half of the people in the world that have flat feet. They're not supposed to exercise. I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I, I, I quit. <laughs> you definitely can exercise with flat feet. I, along with hundreds of thousands of other people, millions of other people have, have been able to do it. And I think it's also kind of funny that a lot of people still believe that you can change your foot shape and your, your arch of your foot if you have flat feet. Like your foot structure kind of is how it is. And yes, we can get our like the arch of our foot stronger so then you can have better stability overall, but you can't change the structure of your foot. At the end of the day, all these myths that we talked about today are because of extremes. Don't be afraid to question things if someone's telling you that you indefinitely have to do it. If you start believing that myth and now telling someone else, this is how myths kind of circulate and travel. And if it becomes more educated, then they can start breaking that cycle right then and there.